Hello everyone, it's two for the price of one today down on the foreshore. As you're about to see, this video covers two days of mudlarking. The first is a freezing cold abortive trip. The second is a sunnier, warmer mission. So, without further ado, let's hit a very cold, wet and windy foreshore. All right, guys, well, I don't know if you can hear me. I don't think anyone can say I'm a fair weather forager. And as my good pal, me old mucker, Steve Brooker, AKA Mud God, likes to say, this is character building. I don't know if it's clear to you, but it's absolutely wazzing it down. Um, so let's see how well I get on. What I'm gonna do right now is head under a bridge. Let's see what we can find today. It's incomplete, but it's nice. And it's got some clues on it. Quite a number of clues, actually. This is really nice. All right, so it's Born and Son. This is an early Joseph Born and Son stoneware bottle. You can glean this info by looking carefully at the details. Here it says Codner Park Potteries, which dates this bottle to a particular window of time. From 1857, when Bourne started producing vitreous stone wares at the Codner Works, to 1861, when production moved to Denby. So, although we have just a common, humble, broken stoneware ink bottle here, we have a particular date line for it, which makes its history all the more tangible. That's a super little fragment of social history. As you might have guessed, I wasn't able to speak much, especially not without my teeth chattering. It really was that cold, hence this voiceover, but bear with me, plenty more to come. the wind chill out here today that's doing it. It is the wind chill, I repeat. I'm hoping that this rain's gonna settle down in a bit. So you can see <laughs> it's um, really uh, wet. I've just got to move around a bit, get warmed up.
Okay, so in real time, I'm about an hour into this ill-fated lark and I can't feel my, well, anything at all actually. So we'll call it a day on this jaunt, but before we head over to the sunnier side of the street, aka a different day, check out these beautiful nacre layer shells. I am back down here again. I'm ashamed to admit I was forced off the foreshore because, genius that I am, forgot to wear my fleece. The rain and cold, incredible. Never known anything like it. So I'm back down here now, having been home and it being a different day, rather a sunny day actually. So let's see what I can continue to find. I see, it's a nice old Glenboig. They of the Glenboig family. It's actually a place in Scotland that became an international name because of their brick manufacturing capabilities. Gosh, that's nice and crisp there, isn't it? Glenboig A1 brick. And what do I see down here? I'm going to give you a moment to spot it. It's kind of an obvious one. And here it is. Now, you can hear the tide lapping at my feet, so I'm going to jump out the way. Here we go. This piece of pottery here is a chunky piece of London type ware, 12th to 14th century. London type ware is often decorated with white slip and that gave the impression of a whiter fabric. It's a rod handle and it's so thick I'm surprised it doesn't have any slash or stab marks on it which potters applied to avoid fractures during firing. It's a great piece of medieval pottery and I'm super pleased with it. Is what looks like some slip that's been put on there, and the pot has left an impression in it. Wow, love that! That's a definite keeper. It is shaping up to be a glorious day. I am so glad that I'm down here nice and early, and we can make up for that abortive mission the other day down here. Lovely. Four or pig, bit of balls tooth. That is coming home with me. I've spotted another pottery fragment here, rim. Now that's interesting. Got a nice little patch down here with some little metal bits and bobs, pin twist. That's a nice solid one there, could also be a fastener. And there we go, another of those little studs. There, I will add it to my collection. Tiny things, stud or mount, decorative little piece of metal there.
All right, well, this here is a tiny chainmail link. And you can tell it's chainmail because of this little bit here, this enclosure point. Uh-oh, I'm dropping it. Let's get it into the palm. <laughs> okay, there it is. Lots of things are mistaken for chainmail a lot of the time. I'm often quite hopeful when I find a little link like this, but you can tell when it's chainmail. It has, as I say, that little enclosure link and overlapping bit. Very cool. While the clippers do their thing and race on past, I just wanted to say hello to Tom. I hope I can see you out here soon. Um, haven't seen you for ages and uh, always nice to see you. And yes, it was Alan. And also, I think I said to you I had to go home because my hands were wet the other day. <laughs> what I meant was every inch of my clothing was wet and I had to get home. I know I don't need to say this, but I do feel like a lame -o for leaving after two hours. Barely two hours. Anyway, also hi to Luca Mudlark. Really nice to meet you finally. So go and check out his Instagram page if you don't know him already. I'll put the info on the screen. Any anglers out there? There. Look at this beautiful lead weight. There we are. A fishing weight. That for me is a lovely find and in fact I'm quite into weights in general. I'm also quite into fishing related items, fishing hooks and the like. I think I will stick some on the screen for you to have a look at. A really cool fishing hook, me, another mudlark found. Here it is on the screen now. Isn't that cool? Just waiting for me down there. Absolutely love it. I know some of you love this. Look at the iridescence on that. to know the age on it probably early 20th century late 19th but that's what we're looking at that gorgeous iridescence that some people call bottle sickness that's not actually technically bottle sickness but I won't bore on about it just look at the pretty colors it's not a really low tide today, but it doesn't matter. We look when we can and where we can, so we can work with what we've got, I'm sure. I've moved on to another area now, and I just wanted to show you this piece of pipe stem I picked up because not all stems are alike. We know that there are pipe stems with rouletted decoration around, um, around the stems, but I like it when I find a pipe with such a slight nuance in style. And if you look at it there, I think it would have gone that way up, like that. And you can see a slight curve to it, but this squished flattening of the pipe into, uh, into that kind of shape, that interests me. Here we go. Another nice thing here. Another jug handle fragment. And again, slip coated. Really nice. I'm afraid it's got to come home with me. Love that. Well, what are the chances? Two pieces of London type wear. Both medieval, as I said before, 12th to 14th century. Both jug handle fragments, both of them keepers. What a strange coincidence. This little spot here keeps giving me fossilized bits of crab. There we go. 
there's another little pincer fossilized crab and you can make out the markings on it there that you can really see that once was a crab oh and some of the ridges there I've come over to the squishy mud in search of coinage if this is modern even though I'm not wearing one I shall eat my hat right I'm not holding out hope here there it is <laughs> it's a sweetie new five pence there we are Scottish thistle now this is an old 5p from when I was a young lady. This is the second one of these that I've found. And there you go, score marks there. I think <laughs> they honestly look to me like they've been worked. I've found two like this now. And um, yeah, I don't know what the answer is, but they do look like working tools scrapers. Glass fan, not seen one in a while, but it's certainly down there. Can you spot it? I think you can always spot it. I'm not very good at doing these can you spot the fine things. Here it is. That is the glass bottle stopper, Victorian, Edwardian and even later. That would have had a cork slip over that and then uh, it would go into the bottle the cork keeping it tight against the bottle neck but there we are nice bottle stopper a bit worn i'll take it home lurking under that big slab is a nice piece of pottery here we go look at that Now that is a special thing. A piece of Siegberg, a drinking vessel. Of things here. One, a piece of typeface with a number, number five, and down here a redware fragment, and I think that is the foot of a little pipkin. Would have had three feet glazed on the inside and there's its foot that will come home yes mates it is once more the curse of the part effect as I've explained before, a artifact is part of an artifact. Now you can see this here has some really lovely decorative elements. And he jumped out of the way of the boat. Hold on. Oh. We're coming to the end of the day now. And anyone know what this is? It is a piece of shrapnel. It is World War II anti-aircraft missile shrapnel. So that's ground to air missiles. And there we go. If I can find it again, there it is, a teeny 
tiny bead. Oh dear. I should be using my trowel for this. There it is, tiny bead. All right guys, well, the tide is well on its way in now. Thank you for joining me. I just bumped into my friend Anna. She is great. Foreshore Seashore. I'll put it up on the screen anyway. Um, lovely to see Anna. I'll see you again for some more mudlarking fun very soon. Take care everyone.